And now we're in design number 11. 11 looks like um, some city buildings. You'd be surprised how many times I have people ask me, is that New York? Or is that Chicago? Or whatever their city they're from. I, yeah. <laughs> it's just buildings. But anyway, it's whatever you want it to be. Um, and you, as you can see, it's stylized. It's not using straight lines. And that's on purpose. So the first thing I'd start with is the name. Now, short names are a little tougher. You know, if it's a three letter name like Ken, uh, plan it out. You really want that design to end up being at least this wide. So make your letters short and fat or short and wide on purpose so you can have some space to do. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a design that's really narrow. All right, so let's go and do Brandon. I'm using uh, my uh, tag font, as I call it, which is a loose variation of just print lettering. Brandon. As I said before, when I'm doing tag, I intentionally touch the letters. It doesn't have to be too much. Um, it helps jumble it a little bit, make it a little more stylized and a little more like graffiti. Just put that there and the dot, I curve my lines, I give it flow. Now I'm gonna do a tight wrap. That's usually about like a quarter of an inch away and I try to follow the contour of the letter. These are individual strokes, not just one solid line. That way you get the line variation, the thickness. Keeps it interesting. It gives it more flow. I use that word a lot with airbrush. Flow comes as a natural, it's a natural um, side effect or natural result of painting quickly. So as you get more comfortable and more confident with your lines on your lettering, and you start to paint fast, you'll know it, notice that it starts to actually look better, which is counterintuitive. The slower you move, especially when doing script, the stiffer it looks. Okay, so now we wanna build sort of like a, a ground or a foundation. If you imagine you're looking through a, a fisheye lens, the earth sort of has this curved effect to it. All right, so we're giving that, that ground curved effect as well. We start with a tight line, we fade down. I might even fade into the letters a little bit. Okay, now I just start with two lines, they're not parallel. A little bit of a curve on the top, following that concept of the uh, fisheye lens. This, this building has a little dome and a, a spire on the top. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Okay, you can see it's sort of angled, like again, fisheye lens effect. I get two more buildings, and then I just draw the sides of the building so you see it kind of going off into the distance to get that perspective. I fill that in, make it dark, and for the rest of it, I'm just doing rat tail. A rat tail is uh, thick on the bottom, thin on the top. Really fast. They don't have to be tight, they can be uh, kind of loose, soft. A little more interesting than just coloring it in. So I got that space, uh, empty space on the top on purpose. Secondly, I'm using blue and I'm just gonna do a nice fade. Just like I was drawing the circle, but I'm gonna do a half circle. I sort of get it uh, saturated here on the outside and fade inward. And it's helpful to actually hold your airbrush at an angle so you can control that overspray because see this is probably not a good idea for me to have this but I've been doing this long enough I know how to control the overspray so I actually intentionally point the airbrush down to keep it from doing overspray on this uh, wrinkle because if I was pointing up that would be covered and then I'm going to do the same thing here a nice fade and then to make it interesting sometimes I'll do a wiggle at the bottom and that's it. 